my annoyance with certain Christian types. I have understood for a long time the frustration that non-believers have with Christians. Many claim it's the Bible or that it's the doctrine. And yes, I'll give them that. And I do struggle with some of those things, but that's not what this video is about. Maybe that is for another time. Today, I'm sharing a personal story and observation about why I think observers and bystanders get pissed off at Christians, the people. In this case, I'll be referencing a specific story that really infuriated me. I'm not going to get into too much of the details of the theology, but let's begin. In a futile attempt to connect with what I thought would be more like-minded individuals, I sought out an alpha course. What is an alpha course? Alpha is a series of short videos that explains God and Jesus and how the gospel functions in your life as a Christian. I enjoyed the Alpha courses and learnt more about things I wasn't aware of. It was an enriching experience when it came to knowledge. Where I became infuriated was with one particular woman, a senior, who began treating me very strangely. If I made a statement like, I love that because of me you guys are now using the same terminology. You know, little dumb things that people say. Her response would be, ah, we've always used that phrasing, that's not because of you. Just things like that, pretty constantly, very, very high school. I'd just smile, I'd ignore it. Anything I ever said was always met with opposition where it didn't need to be. It was unintentional on my part, but I'm sure that somehow I rubbed her up the wrong way. I don't know what I was doing, but it wasn't my intention. I hated what seemed to me to be intentional undermining of anything I said, but I'd maintain a polite reaction. One night, after the final course, Nikki Gumbel, the host of the series, said, Christianity includes the Orthodox and the Catholics and we have more that unites us and blah, blah, blah. I had no issues with this sentiment, but I'm a sucker for accuracy. We don't want to be divided. Tragically, the church has divided so much over the years. Unity is vital. Sadly, in the history of the church, there's been a lot of disunity. But we live in an exciting time when the Holy Spirit is bringing us together. I love the Catholic Church. I've been so enriched by it. I love the Orthodox Church. I love the Protestant Church. I love the Pentecostal Church. We're all part of the same body. We're all one in Jesus. And what unites us is infinitely greater than what divides us. Unity and truth are not opposites, they go together. So, when asked at the end of the final video of the course what our thoughts were, everyone was quiet. So, the older woman stated that she thought what he said was great. I didn't agree completely with what was said, although I appreciated the sentiment and agreed in part. Every denomination will have something they disagree on, so why not focus on the things which unites the majority over the things which divide? Okay, I can totally get on board with that. But her reaction was hostile, and everyone in the room looked on dumbfounded. I said I disagreed and was completely mowed down for it. She kept saying, don't be so judgmental, stop being so judgmental, in front of a room of 10 people. She was shaming me in front of a room of Christians saying I was judgmental. The only one shouting and casting judgment was the old woman. So what did I say? I said that I disagreed with Nikki Gumbel's statement in part because Catholics aren't actually Christian. I might make a video on this in the future, but for now, I won't get too involved in the theological debate of it. I'll simply recount the heated discussion that took place. She then said... There are many denominations that believe different things, but there is no cause for judgment and saying they are not Christian. So I asked, what, what exactly? She couldn't think of anything and said it didn't matter. The point is that Catholics are Christian, so I decided to reiterate my point. Like this. O okay, but Catholics pray to Mary, right? She's not God and Catholics pray to the saints. They are also not God. In the Ten Commandments, doesn't it say that thou shalt not commit idolatry, which means the worshipping of 
anything that isn't the God of the Bible? Any time a Catholic sanctifies a new saint, they are going against the Bible, a doctrine they claim to abide by. Well, if this is the case, and the Catholics are Christian, the Catholic organization, as I prefer to call it, is completely contradicting and sinning against their own book. I didn't say that part to her. Point is, eventually she came up with an example, and her example was that there are some denominations that don't like it when Christians dance during worship and dance during prayer. And I was thinking in my head, okay, well, that really isn't a biblical change. That's not, that's not against the Bible dancing. Like, that's a stupid example. Sorry, <clears throat> tangent. <laughs> I really like that. Um, back to the story. The old woman began to make everyone uncomfortable and I could see people feel sorry for me. I will say in their defense that they were all lovely people. It was just her displaying hostile and negative behavior, directing pejoratives my way. I followed up with Christians don't pray to saints because that is idolatry, isn't it? She kept on saying, don't be so judgmental. The rant continued on. You know, she was the only one illustrating exactly what being judgmental was. Then a young lady named Esther jumped in to defend me. She said that one of the disciples, Paul, said that as Christians, we are called to guide each other on the right path. The article that I found explains it a little better. So here it is. That's why the prophets called on their people to judge righteously, meaning to adjudicate on someone's behalf, to take up their righteous cause, to expose the wicked and rule against them. If you saw someone about to murder someone else and you put a stop to it... Hello? 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 That is an example of taking up the righteous cause on that person's behalf. When Esther explained this, she still, the old woman, was not convinced and said, Oh, well, yeah, sure, but there is a way to say things. Yeah. Take your own advice, woman. The entire time I kept my cool 
when all I wanted to say was, What the fuck, lady? We were asked to input, and now you are shitting on me. Why? But I kept my cool. It's all good. Needless to say... I know I was absolutely right, despite her rude, bitchy demeanour and inability to debate the point in a more structured and respectful, controlled manner. But, you know, respect your elders or some shit. (sighs) In my ignorance, I thought, well, she is a Christian. I'm sure on the drive home, I will receive a phone call from her apologising to me for treating me in that way. I had her up on a pedestal simply for being a Christian. Life lesson learnt right there. But don't get me wrong. Most Christians I know are not like that. Anyway, I really was stupid to think that. She was a hard-headed old biddy, and I am glad to never return to that church group. I did encounter other problems on a more political nature, but maybe I'll expose that another time. One thing is for sure, I am not a Pentecostal. And... I will always challenge anyone if I disagree with their opinion or thoughts. I believe in critical thinking. I will be sure to stay respectful even when they make it extremely difficult. Clearly, I have not let this go completely, but I'm not 100% Christian anyway, so let's let that be my loophole. (laughs) Either way, I pray she's happy and well. I hope she's fine. I do. Just to reiterate one point, however... I find Christians to be among the kindest communities out there and the most charitable and loving and tolerant. This is a story about one experience with one group. They are not all like that. In her defense, maybe she was having an off day. Anyway, thanks again, guys. Until next time. Yeah, I got that on video. (laughs) 